السلام علیکم آئی ڈاکٹر تنقین سنگھ ویلکم یو ٹو دا فائنل ویک آف دا سیمسٹر دیٹ از ویک سکسٹین دا ٹاپک فار ٹوڈیز ڈسکشن از آئیڈینٹیفیکیشن اینڈ مینجمنٹ آف ایموشنل اینڈ بہیویرل پرابلمس دا لیکچر سلائز فار دا سیٹ ٹاپک ہیو بین ڈیوائڈیڈ ان تھری پارٹس اینڈ ہیئر وی آر فوکسنگ آن دا پارٹ ون آئی بی ایکسپلیننگ دیٹ واٹ آر دا لرننگ آبجیکٹوس ان دس نیکسٹ سلائڈ The learning objectives for the today's lecture are that uh, students would be able to understand and learn that what is emotional disorder, what is behavioral disorder, we'll be connecting it to different um, internalizing and externalizing behaviors as well as we will be discussing regarding different definitions of it. Our focus would also be on how to identify the children with emotional and behavioral problem. In this part one, we'll be having only a brief overview about how do we identify children with emotional and behavioral problems. What should be considered when identifying the students with emotional disorders? And we'll be also discussing regarding the few strategies and the tips that may be used by the teachers in the classroom settings in order to handle the behavior of the students. Here we have a case uh, in which there is uh, a 14 year old 8th grade student who began having problem as early as infancy and uh, her most uh, common behavior or you can say the problematic behavior was uh, self injurious behavior. She used to cut her arms for that. She also uh, made threats to uh, her mother and herself at the age of five and was around taking around 22 different medications uh, which were not uh, effective for her to bring any kind of change in her behavior. At the age of eight, uh, her mother made contact with a school counselor who looked for her strengths rather than focusing on just her weaknesses and the problems. Uh, she found a teacher who was willing to work with her as a student and uh, she also focused on the strengths and created an atmosphere of respect for the student. So the role of teacher was also significant in um, making her comfortable and giving her respect and focusing on the strengths of the student. She collaborated successfully with the other teachers and professionals in order to uh, allow her to participate fully in typical age appropriate activities and as a result of that it was um, the outcome of it was that she um, the client or student she started having reduction in uh, her self injurious behaviors as well as her anger outbursts also started decreasing and she was able to uh, have more um, peaceful and stable conversations as well as later on she started uh, developing uh, and uh, interacting with the peers and developing good friendship with them. So here in the scenario or in this the case vignette, what we find is that uh, there is a role of counselor most uh, we can say predominantly, and the teacher, which are very much significant. And in our cases, uh, mostly the counselor and the teacher is same in Pakistan. So uh, their role in enhancing the skills of the student and to help her manage the emotional and behavioral problems are very vital over here. So in the situations where we can have an interdisciplinary approach, uh, we can make uh, involvement of the other professionals as well as significant others in the life of client or the student, the outcome of the intervention can be effective and it may bring a long-lasting improvement in the client having any kind of problematic behavior or emotional and behavioral problems. With reference to the case when you discuss, uh, I want you to reflect on the case and uh, just take five minutes and identify outcome of each support system that is the role of mother, the role of counselor and the role of the teacher. Uh, select one support and discuss about uh, what they have done or how it has facilitated 
the client or student. And how could outcome have been different without the support in the first place? That is home life, social abilities, and education. Your answer can be of around uh, 100 to 200 words. In today's lecture, it is important to understand two terms with reference to emotional and behavioral disorders. Emotionally disturbed is a term that is currently used. Uh, it was basically given in the act of 1997 by Individuals with Disability Education Act. Similarly, behavioral disorders or behaviorally disorders term uh, is used by the Council for Children with Behavioral Disorders that focuses attention on the observable aspects of the children. So the things that are observable, they categorize them as behavioral disorders. We will be discussing regarding these terms, terminologies and disorders in detail in upcoming lectures or behavioral disorders which are commonly referred as ED and BD. These labels are basically used for a certain kind of children or students whose behavior fall considerably outside the norms of the society or something that they consider to be normal or something uh, that may be considered as a student behavior, a common and a normal student behavior, for example, to sit and all and not show the temper tantrums. However, the other child may be showing that that would be falling outside the norm. Though the Council for the Children with Behavior Disorders has recommended that the definition of ED is not limited uh, or it does not eliminate the socially maladjusted, this change has yet to be made. However, there have been different uh, attempts that have been made to establish a comprehensive definition for this particular disability or a disorder. But most have met with varying amount of criticism. That's why in today's lecture, again, we will be having different kind of discussions regarding different kind of definitions. Uh, we'll be focusing on the two approaches for defining and understanding EBD or ED or BD, which are referred to as disease model and dimensional model. The disease model um, is often uh, in line with the DSM, that is Diagnostical and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. It considers that uh, EDBD uh, as emotional or collection of distressing behaviors, thoughts, emotions, behaviors that actually differ from normality. A person either has or does not have the disorder based on the number of symptoms that meet the established criteria. In the dimensional model, sometimes which is referred as uh, empirical model too, this disability is looked at across a uh, spectrum of different sorts. It assumes that all children behave inappropriately at times and that the duration, severity and frequency these three things are more prominent and more dominant in order to determine that whether a child requires intervention or whether the behavior is inappropriate or not. So dimension model focuses with respect to duration, severity and frequency. category that is generally assigned to children uh, who have symptoms of emotional disorder or behavioral disorder generally receive a label of emotional disturbance. The term emotional disturbance is um, often seen or uh, um, its labeling requires that a student be offered intervention if they meet one or more of the identifiers that we'll be discussing in a while that adversely affects um, the educational performance and that has existed for a long period of time and uh, creates um, um, interference in functioning to a marked degree. So the term emotional disturbed means a condition exhibiting one or more of the following characteristics. That is something that I referred as identifiers and over a long period of time and to a marked degree, which adversely affects the education performance of the student or the child. 
The identifiers or the characteristics include an inability to learn that cannot be explained by intellectual, sensory, or health factors, an inability to build or maintain satisfactory interpersonal relations with the peers and teachers. Sometimes such kind of children may be indulgent in the solitary activities or maybe having uh, so much anger outbursts uh, that they are not accepted by the peer groups or their behavior is um, not um, considered to be appropriate as a student or misbehavior is more predominant. See the inappropriate types of behavior or feelings under normal circumstances like for example, does not listen, does not agrees, does not uh, obeys or generally defies to whatever commands are given. Simply, if the child is asked to copy down from the board, the child simply defies. A general pervasive mood of unhappiness or depression is engrossed in his own world or uh, does not listen, has low mood, is irritated most of the time. E, a tendency to develop physical symptoms or fears associated with personal or school problems. The term includes children who are schizophrenic. The term does not include children who are socially maladjusted unless it is determined that they are emotionally disturbed. All this definition has been shared by Hayward in 2009. I have provided the reference at the end of the slides. It is said that uh, generally each and every uh, child shows such kind of temper tantrums and inappropriate behaviors and emotions at some point of uh, time in life, but it may be something situational. However, in order to identify that how many uh, people or children actually have uh, ED and BDs, we need to refer to the prevalence of students with emotional behavioral disorders. The reports indicate that emotional and behavioral disorder in general population actually ranges from 10% to 20% of the school population. Fewer than 1% of the students receive special education services for the emotional disorders. And many times you do find it that there are school dropouts because of such kind of behaviors as well because either the schools uh, dismiss the child or because of the reason that the child is unable to gel together with the teacher or the peers, they uh, stop going to the school. And of these 1% students, less than half are identified in schools. Emotional or behavioral disorders are regarded as underserved because of the reason that most of the time uh, teachers family members, peers, and authorities of school, they are unable to understand that the child is actually having some kind of uh, mental health issue. It is not just um, simple uh, misbehavior or rudeness of the child, rather it is the mental health problem which can be catered and there can be skill enhancement and there can be behavioral control and emotional management of the child that can be taught to him or her if um, some additional attention is paid to the child and if the family is involved if the counselor is involved so that the life can be made easier for the child characteristics of AD and BD because of the reason that uh, when I'll be referring to the specific disorders you will be able to understand because you would have already studied and you would be having some kind of information regarding those disorders so the it's a huge umbrella under which a number of disorders can get fit in like conduct disorders aggression related problems or anger outbursts hyperactivity like ADHD, socialized aggression would be there in that individual, uh, problems related to depression, low mood would be there, there would be anxiety withdrawal as well. So 
So you can see that there can be one individual who may be having all these characteristics or few of these characteristics and may be having one specific disorder like for example conduct disorder would be there. We classify psychological disorders and behaviors in externalizing and internalizing behaviors. Externalizing behaviors are those which are uh, overt and can be observed. For example, uh, aggression, hitting, acting out, the tantrums thrown by the child, uh, and shouting, which are readily observable. And uh, these are the things that, can, that are noisy and that can create any kind of problem for the people around, whether it, the child be, um, exhibit such kind of behaviors in the classroom so obviously no teacher or the peers would accept such kind of behaviors so these are the externalizing behaviors as far as internalizing behaviors are concerned these are not uh, directly observable but still we can observe them through other uh, behaviors for example shyness is an internalizing behavior withdrawal uh, not interacting with the people just looking down on the floor and not communicating, not giving the responses or excessive worry and anxiety, um, tenseness, uh, depression, which are not directly observable, but still there are a number of behaviors that can help us understand those behaviors, internalizing behaviors. And these negatively affect the individuals exhibiting behaviors. Once we are able to highlight or uh, assess that whether the child is having internalizing behavior or is having externalizing behavior, it becomes easier for us to accurately describe that what is our client or student behavior. Similarly, it also helps to respond appropriately to device um, intervention plan to provide a diagnosis and in order to communicate about his or her problem to the school authorities, to the educational authorities or the family members as well. DSM-5 has a classification system that was published by American Psychiatric Association that can also be utilized once we have understanding of externalizing and internalizing behavior and that can further facilitate us for making the diagnosis. out an identification for students with emotional disorder or behavioral disorder we need to see that uh, what is the chronological age of the student or the child and what is his or her mental age and for that we can carry out the IQ assessment that will help us understand the age chronolo chronological age age as well as the mental age of the child and then see that what kind of behaviors uh, the child is actually reflecting or displaying whether they are age appropriate or not if there is discrepancy between the behavior and the age or not then the behavior that is typically um, considered to be inappropriate you need to uh, crack down the um, number of times it is occurring that is the frequency of the behavior then how many symptoms are present check it along with DSM and you can create different kind of checklist as well whether there is some kind of uh, inner suffering that is the child feels low the child feels sad uh, the behavior that is executed by the child uh, after carrying that out what does the child feel? Feel good, good about it? Feels bad about it? Is there some kind of guilt or not? Regarding the harm, harm to self and harm to others, whether it is present or not. And what is, uh, in addition to the frequency of the behavior, whether the behavior is persistent or the behavior is non-persistent. Is there lack of self-satisfaction, self-gratification or guilt? Similarly, uh, what is the severity of it and to what extent that particular behavior lasts, that is, what is the duration of that behavior. All these would help in order to identify the nature of emotional and behavioral disorder as well as the severity or degree of the problem. 
there are different kind of scales and checklists that are available for conducting the assessment however uh, a few of the most common one are behavioral objective sequence report which uh, help uh, the teacher or the counselor to assess behavioral problems and social skill deficits and uh, on the basis of that assessment the good thing about uh, BOS that is behavioral objective sequence is that it helps in developing the intervention plan for such children which are customized in nature for that specific child other than that we have functional behavioral assessment fba that is another one of the most common one i have provided with a few videos and uh, that how do we conduct what is fba uh, other than that how do we use it and there is abc that is antecedent behavior and consequences assessment that we carry out there is also one particular video regarding that that will help you understand that what is abc and how do we chart abc in order to be assessment there have to be a few strategies that may be followed and uh, to have a better assessment of uh, the child or the student so the first strategy is to develop a positive relationship with the student about uh, any kind of topic that has to be discussed it gives a personal uh, connection with the student or the client about uh, something they are an expert at you select that kind of topic about which they would like to discuss about you may ask them that what is something they like or they would like to talk about and uh, such kind of thing what happens is that when uh, you let the student or the child make you learn something so rather than just giving them um, an answer so you for example you ask the child to count and the child tells you counting till 10 and you say oh that's good you know till 10 you can count till 10 and uh, rather than that when you say a statement like um, it's good that you know how to count so there is a difference in um, the feedback that you are giving uh, in the second statement that you would be using it would be something like that the child feels like that the child has the capacity so it will help you win the student over or the client over you may use sometimes humor to build relationship but uh, humor has to be very um, senseful and it should not be degrading and uh, it may also decrease tension but then again you have to first uh, assess in your uh, history checking session that whether that child would like to have your humor or not in different lectures we have discussed that um, the physical arrangement and the physical environment should be always uh, same for the client or the student so the strategy too is to maintain an uh, organized physical environment that is you may post up a schedule or agenda that provides a predictable routine that usually what happens is that when we are winding up a session we provide the schedule to our client for the next session that when it would be what would be the date what would be the time and what topics would be discussed and similarly at the end of the session you do provide a homework assignment to your client and you may tell the client that in the next session that homework assignment will be discussed in order to uh, track the progress of the client so post classroom rules and consequences uh, can also be uh, scheduled in the session as well as they can be discussed or inform students during the classrooms keep the classroom uncluttered clean attractive and uncrowded for such kind of children who are having behavioral or emotional problem establish a personal physical space um, there should be always the usage of desk in between a student or a client and the counselor or the teacher and material should be available for each and every student for example if there is some kind of art activity that was going on so there should be material for each uh, until and un unless you have made your students ready for sharing or your client is ready for sharing 
establish a safe place for the students to retreat uh, so that they may exercise self-control and they may uh, be able to learn that how to walk away uh, from a situation where um, which we may be tapping as a bad situation or a situation in which uh, the child or student may be provoked to exhibit an anger outburst. The third strategy is to using a time frame. Uh, it may be a time frame. It may be a specific stopwatch or a timer that may be used in order to modify the behavior. For example, uh, sometimes when we want a child to modify his behavior, we may uh, keep a stopwatch or uh, we may make the child learn counting that to what extent the child has to control a behavior. For example, when a child is learning how to control anger, you may tell the child to keep counting on 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, uh, with obviously pauses, so that the child would be able to control the behavior. So it would be around 10 seconds or so that will be managed. Similarly, if the child can use the timer, and if you are having the material and resource of availability of a timer, then the timers can also be used. The purpose is to increase the appropriate behavior and to reduce the inappropriate behavior. Uh, you may show the timer and explain that you will be using it to look on for on-task behaviors or that may be given to the child and the child may be uh, carrying out a self-monitor of his or her own behavior. Discuss specifically that uh, what are the behaviors that you are looking for, that is you need to um, describe the behavior on which you are actually working and you want to modify or you want the child to control that behavior which may be a problematic behavior or as we said that we intend to increase the appropriate behavior so we may be using the timer for uh, um, classroom activity like uh, reading or work working without disturbing the other students Right? And the timer may be used by the teacher in order to see that how long the child is able to work and then that can be discussed with the student. Set the timer to ring at different intervals so that uh, the child would be able to know about that how many intervals have passed or there is still the timer uh, on. And uh, when the timer goes off on the task, student gets a point. Uh, there can be usage of token economy as well, um, like a star may be given, some kind of sticker may be given, a sweet or a candy may be given. It depends uh, on your resources that are available as well as that what is the reinforcer that is important for the child. Because those reinforcement or reinforcers would work that are considered to be valuable by the child. Gradually, you can increase the intervals to longer period of time and would be able to see that the progress of the child is in terms when the intervals are increasing. That is, uh, longer intervals for uh, non-occurrence of an inappropriate behavior, longer intervals, uh, for example, the child who is unable to sit in the class the interval of uh, sitting period or sitting tolerance of the child is increasing. So that is actually indicating the progress of the child. In those three um, strategies, there can be further many other tips for the teachers uh, that can be utilized. There are a few additional tips for the teachers. The that is how you respond to the students' and feelings and intentions. Disorders. Listen to them. It is important them to that respond good, to the students' uh, feelings what they're good at, intentions and recognize their, their behaviors. And always create emotionally safe classroom. why behavior is occurring. And importantly, it is very important to listen carefully to the child and always highlight that what are the strengths of the children or when the student or the child is trying to uh, display a good behavior, always credit the child for that. Notice and recognize the improvement and always give credit to the child for the improvement 
and always reinforce the behavior through your appreciation or through local economy or through other usage of reinforcer. Positive calls at home so that the teacher would be calling um, parent or mother and they will be telling something positive or improvement regarding the child to the family. Create an emotionally safe classroom. That is, you not just work with one specific uh, client or student who is having emotional behavioral disorder. Rather, you uh, just try to communicate it to other children as well as make their behaviors um, in such a way that it creates an emotionally safe classroom. Individualize supports and services and base them on the student's strengths and that depends that if you have identified the strengths and weaknesses of each of your student in the class or not. Family members are the most important uh, people in the life of an individual. It is always good to involve the family members, whether it's mother or father and uh, additively it would be good if both the parents are involved and if the siblings are there and sometimes siblings are studying in the same schools and what is the level of functioning of the other sibling that is also important whether the child is having the behavior problems or not that is also to be uh, found and then they all can be involved for the improvement of the child The children having emotional and behavioral disorders are underserved because nobody is able to understand that it is a mental health problem and around 50% of the students who have emotional behavioral disorders as mentioned previously as well in the lecture they drop out of the school and those who tend to remain in the schools they have always a difficulty in uh, struggling with their academics um, their academic performance is not good and due to all these as well as other factors they face difficulties in uh, developing the relationship with the peers uh, working on the assignments as well as maintaining good grades further uh, all this pattern as it is learned in their academic uh, careers or schooling they tend to transfer it to their um, real life situation later on which becomes difficult for them to maintain the jobs and because they do not have superior quality of education or you can say they do not have good grades and academic performance so again they have uh, little room for occupancy or uh, occupation or professional living so there is a great need for effective interventions to be used in order to help these students stay in school and develop the academic and social skill needed for the graduation. Thank you folks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more and like and share the video. Click the small bell icon that appears beside the subscription button to receive the notification the minute our video is uploaded. Thank you for watching. Allah Hafiz.